1,000 contestants. Just one winner. They're all here to play 1,000 to 1. The Red Nose Quiz. Fighting it out question after question. And only one of them can join me on March 16th for the grand final. For a chance to win up to 1,000 prizes. Let's find out who's moving on and who's moving out. For themselves and comic relief. Are you champing at the bit? Yeah! It's a 1,000 to 1. Starts Wednesday at 8.40 on BBC One. Get ready for comic relief. BBC One with Double Dale hosting the Variety Club Show Business Awards in half an hour, but first, he's game for this. Welcome the host of a thousand to one, the one and only Dale Winton. Hello, everybody, and good evening. Welcome to 1001, the Comic Relief Quiz. Yes, that's right. It's Comic Relief time once again. And all these people are here to play 1,000 to 1 because it's the Red Nose Quiz. Do you know, we're only 30 days away from Red Nose Day on Friday, March the 16th. Red Nose Day, so soon? <laughs> now, over the next five weeks, I shall be whittling down 1,000 contestants. And let's face it, there's nothing I like more than a good whittle on a Wednesday. <laughs> That is, until one lucky winner takes home an incredible 1,000 prizes. <laughs> On top of all those prizes, there's another amazing busload of booty that will go to Comic Relief Projects in the winner's home area. So, you're not just playing for yourselves, you're playing to benefit Comic Relief Projects right here in the UK. Now, to get to our lucky winner, 999 of you are going to have to go. But everybody who takes part has promised to do something for Comic Relief, and I hope you will too. Here's how it works. Each week, 200 people will play for one of five places in the grand final, which will be on Red Nose Day itself, March 16th. And the first 200 are here tonight. From Scotland to Surrey, from Belfast to Bedford, they're all here to play 1,000 to 1, which coincidentally is the odds I gave them on all being able to get here on a train. <laughs> so, are you raring to go? Yes! Are you champing at the bit? Yes! You see, I can tell I've champed a few bits in my time. <laughs> I've clamped a few too. So, let's play 1,000 to 1. <laughs> Round 1 is called 225. And I'm going to trim this week's 200 to just 25 in under 10 minutes. Well, all of our contestants have been divided at random into eight groups of 25. Now, as you can see, each group is wearing a different coloured sash. And it does look like the early rounds of the Miss World up there, doesn't it? <laughs> so let's get on with the game. Now, in this, the first round, you're playing as a team, which means you may well get every answer right. But unfortunately, if the rest of your team don't, you're out. So you ready to play? Here we go. Here's round one and here's how it works. I'm going to give you four words that are all possible answers to the next set of questions. After each question, you use your key bads to select the answer you think is correct. Now remember, you can choose the same word twice. So, if we're ready, we'll start. Here are your first four choices. And they're all very well-known people. We've got Vanessa, Esther, Oprah and Ricky. Please let me know which one of those is the 17th book of the Bible. Please vote now. Okay, you've all voted. I can tell you the answer I was looking there for was Esther. There you go. <laughs> Have a look at those four again and tell me whose name spells a Marx brother backwards. Please vote now. Okay, and the answer is Oprah! 
Now, here's your last chance, because after this you may well be eliminated. Have a look at those four and tell me, which one of them held the title Misfire Prevention 1971? Please vote now. <laughs> Okay, I can tell you the answer I was looking for there was... <laughs> Oprah! <laughs> okay, it's time for a hundred of you to say goodbye. Only the quickest and highest scoring four blocks can play on. So we're going to cut them in half. Let's find out who's moving on and who's moving out. Oh, and I can see turquoise, red, yellow and orange. We have to say goodbye. <laughs> But the good news is purple, pink, blue, and green stays. <laughs> we're now down to 100 contestants, just four blocks left. Right, four colours left, but we're going to lose half of you. Oh, yes, we are. Let's have a look at our next selection of answers. They are Manhattan, Mallorca, Madeira, and Madagascar. One of them gave its name to a Woody Allen movie. Please vote now. Which one is it? Well, you've all voted, and the answer is... Manhattan! <laughs> Same four, but one of them gave its name to a cake. I wonder which one it is. Please vote now. OK. Might have got that one right, I think. <laughs> Let's see what the right answer is. Yeah, Madeira. And looking at those four again, we've got Manhattan, Mallorca, Madeira and Madagascar, and one of them gave its name to a whiskey cocktail. Please vote now. And the answer is... Manhattan. <laughs> It's crunch time again. Only the quickest and highest scoring two blocks can play on. So let's find out who goes and who's on the nose. <laughs> well, so far, still in the game, purple and pink. <laughs> so we're now down to just 50. Half of you will have to go. Half of you will stay. It's the last question of round one. And here to ask the question is somebody who really knows how to separate the men from the boys. It's over to the gorgeous Caroline Quentin. Hello, Dale. Hello, everybody. The possible answers are <laughs> curry, chips, lager, <laughs> or kebab. Thank you, Caroline. Now, there are the options. Uh, tell me, which one of these are used in place of money at a casino? <laughs> Go on, vote. I think you might have got that one right, but just, <laughs> just to be sure, Caroline, go and give us the answer. Chips. Oh. Okay. When you look at those four, tell me, what was the name of the skater who won the Olympic gold in 1976? Please vote now. Okay, everybody voted. Caroline, sweetheart, give me the right answer. And the answer to that is curry. <laughs> Here is your last chance to stay in the game. We've got the same four again, curry, chips, lager and kebab. And one of them appears over 19 times in the underworld hit, Born Slippy. Which one is it? Please vote. Okay, you've all voted. Our expert in the field is Caroline. Sweetheart, pray tell, what's the right answer? Lager. <laughs> lager, 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 lager. <laughs> Thank you, Caroline. We will see you very soon. Thank you, my darling. So half of you have got to take an early bath. Let's find out who's on the nose and who goes. Didn't you? The rest of you, I'm afraid, it's good night and thank you so much. You're leaving with nothing. But just by being here, you have done something for Comic Relief. I thank you very much. And you give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> for those of you who haven't got a clue what to do for Red Nose Day, here are my five fundraising tips for this week.
Hunt around the house for any loose change that might be hiding behind the sofa. Kids, get sponsored to tidy your room. That is the most pathetic thing I have ever heard. Serenade a loved one. Maybe they'll pay you to stop singing. Do a sponsored babysit. Get the family to pay you an extra one pound in aid of comic relief. Get sponsored to clean the house for everyone else. Don't forget, whatever you do, do something, because there are plenty more ideas for ways to raise money for comic relief in the fundraising pack. Now, get a pen and paper handy, because I'll be giving you the number at the end of the show. Well, there's 25 of you left, but to me, that's still too many. And in round two, I'm going to be cutting it down to size. So, let's play round two. 25 to 5. Just 25 of the original 200 contestants remain, but only one of them can join me on March 16th for the Red Nose Day 1000 to 1 Grand Final. And for that chance to win not only prizes for themselves, but also prizes for comic relief projects where they live. Oh, don't forget, you're not playing as a team now. You're playing individually. So I say welcome to Lynn. Where's Lynn? Hi, Lynn. How Hi. are you? Done very Hi, well to get this far. I'm fascinated by you, because I <laughs> happen to know you've got a deaf dog. I have. <laughs> now, not that that's unusual, but what is unusual about Lynn is that you're teaching the dog what? Sign language. <laughs> How do you do ear fetch Rover in sign language? Oh, I can't, I can't do full sentences yet, but I am teaching it to come, to sit, and good girl, is thumbs up, and um, right. lie down. It's coming along nicely. Um, <laughs> Liam, where's Liam? Yeah. Well, I have to tell you, the rest of the 24 playing in 25 to 2, Liam is the only one amongst you to get every single question right so far. Well done. <laughs> You've got every... You're the only one. The only one. So well done. So you'll do quite well in this round. And finally, Vicky. Where's Vicky? Hi. Hi, gorgeous. What is your claim to fame? OK, when I was six, I was kissed by Lionel Blair. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, he's a sweetheart, Lionel. Oh, absolute babe. What can I We're say? A babe? <laughs> I'll go that far. <laughs> uh, 25 to 2 contestants. Good. <laughs> it is time to lose another 20 of you as we turn the screw and play round two, which we call 25 to 5. Here's the deal. Until now, you've been playing as a team. But from this point on, it's every man or woman for themselves. And after every second question, we lose five of you. So to stay in the game, you need to be correct and quick. Because in the event of a tie, it's the speed of your answer that will decide your fate. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. Here we go. Have a look at these four. <coughs> the good life. Just good friends. The goodies. And goodness gracious me. But which one was broadcast first? Please vote. <laughs> You've all voted. Again, the same four, but which TV show was broadcast last? Please vote. OK, you've all voted. I can tell you two answers were. The show to be broadcast first was The Goodies, and the show to be broadcast last was... Goodness gracious me! OK, here's where we lose five. The lights will decide. Let's see who's going to stay and who goes. Left. Well done to those of you that remain. Here are your next four. I wish you luck. <coughs> Here are your four. Wimbledon, French Open, Australian Open and US Open. All four, but which one of them was the Grand Slam tournament to be played first this year? Please vote now. <coughs> OK, you've all voted. Now look at the four and tell me which one will be played last this year. Please vote. OK, you've all voted. I can tell you the one to be played first was the Australian Open, and the one to play last was the US Open. So, remember, if your light stays on, you play on. Let's do the lights. <laughs> OK, 15 left. 
We're going to get you down to ten. Have a look at these four. We have traffic lights, yellow no parking lines, zebra crossing, and traffic wardens. You get to play. Which one of those came first to the United Kingdom? Please vote now. OK, you've all voted. Now please tell me which one came last. Please vote. <laughs> well, you've all voted. I can tell you the answers. The ones that came first were the traffic lights. And the ones that came last were traffic wardens. So it's crunch time. Who stays? Who goes? You can't fight the lights. If it stays out, then so are you. Let's have a look. <laughs> it's very tense. Ten of you left. Going to get you down to five, going to cut you in half. Same rules apply. Here are your four answers. They are Mrs. Thatcher leaves number ten. Angie leaves EastEnders, Jerry leaves the Spice Girls, and T leaves in round bags. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, could you tell me, which happened first? Which one of those events happened first? Please vote. You've all voted? Good. Now have a look at the same four answers and tell me which event happened last. Please vote. The first one to happen was Angie leaving EastEnders. <laughs> and the last one to happen was Jerry leaving the Spice Girls. <laughs> so, for five more of you, the end is nigh. Brace yourselves. You can only play on if your light stays on. Only one of these five can win a place in the Grand Red Nose Day final on March 16th. But before that, we'll give you a chance to gird their loins. I know I grab every chance I can to gird mine. Um, thank you. As every week, we'll be keeping you up to date with what's happening all over the UK in the run-up to Red Nose Day. So, let's cross over to RNN and hear the latest Red Nose news with Angela Rippon and Harry Hill. Good evening and welcome to Red Nose News from the BBC. I'm Angela Rippon. And I'm Michael Burke. The United Kingdom has been put on red nose alert this week as it witnessed the official launch of what organisers hope is going to be the biggest, most successful record-breaking Red Nose Day ever. It was announced this week that Red Nose Day 2001 will be on Friday the 16th of March. The slogan this year is Say Pants to Poverty and organisers hope to encourage members of the public to stage sponsored events around the theme of pants. Yes, by sewing up their leg holes, pants can be used to store a whole stilton. <laughs> or they could be tessellated to make this wonderful patchwork quilt. Or why not simply wear them outside your trousers all day, like the Backstreet Boys? Since the first Red Nose Day in 1988, Comic Relief has sold over 30 million red noses. This year's nose has been designed by Ardman Animations, the company behind Wallace and Gromit and Chicken Run. And now the moment you've all been waiting for as I reveal the nose. Oh, hello, Mum. <laughs> Forecasters predict a wave of fundraising activity across the country. One of the first fundraising events to take place this week was the charity premiere of Disney's latest film, The Emperor's New Groove. Uh-oh. Don't tell me. We're about to go over a huge waterfall. Yep. Sharp rocks at the bottom? Most likely. Bring it on. If you'd like some ideas on how to help Comic Relief raise even more money for projects here in the UK and Africa, you can phone for a fundraiser's pack. The number to call is 09068 20 2001. Why not join us next week when we'll be bringing you even more Red Nose news from me, Angela Riffin. And me, Michael Byrne. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Richie. Thank you very much. Thank you, Angela and Harry.
They'll be back next week to see what's happened in the Comic Relief campaign. So, we started with a terrified 200, and now just the fearless five are left. They are just a red nose length away from being tonight's winner and gaining a place in the 1000 to 1 grand final on Red Nose Day, March 16th. So it's time to play round three. Yes, you've guessed it, it's called Five to Two. <laughs> By the end of round three, only two of you will be left to play for the head to head. The other three will be long gone. And what a famous five we've got, Jed. Did right. you think you'd get this far? No, I didn't. I wish you luck. Thank you. Standing next to you is the lovely Alison. This is not your first time on the telly, is it? No, Dale, it isn't. I had a walk-on, walk-off part in Spender about five, six years ago. Right. I thought you'd won something on telly. I was on Cracker Jack as well. Oh, you see, you weren't going to admit to that, <laughs> were you? You weren't going to admit to that. Well, I wish you luck, Alison. Thanks. And David made it through to the final five. What's this about you meeting Ewan McGregor? Yeah. Where yeah. did you meet Ewan McGregor? Um, I met him in a toilet in a pub. <laughs> when you say you met him, did you talk to him? Yeah, we had, a, we had quite a long chat. I, <laughs> I knew he'd just finished filming the new Star Wars film, or was right. the new Star Wars film. And being a bit of a fan, I grilled him on this. And uh, he told me basically that the whole plot, a good 18 months before it was released in the cinema, so... Uh, How long were you in this toilet? <laughs> long enough. Long enough. <laughs> Well, I wish you luck, David. You're very welcome. And Lynn, oh, we thought we'd lost you. Still here. You're still here. I'm worried about your deaf collie. I'm still worried about your deaf collie. Thank and finally, you. Richard. I haven't forgotten you, Richard. Thanks. Um, now, listen, you also met a very famous person. I did, yeah, Julia Roberts. Fabulous. Where right. did you meet Julia Roberts? At the, the premiere for Notting Hill. And what was she like? Was she gorgeous? She was actually gorgeous, but surprisingly short. <laughs> and you being so tall and all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish you luck, Richard. Thank I wish you. all of our famous five luck. Time to crack on with the game. Yes. <laughs> now. now, to spice things up a bit, you'll each start with 50 points. Now, each correct answer you give will earn you an extra 20. But give a wrong answer and you'll lose 10 points. And remember, you've got to be quick because your voting time is important in the event of a tie. Here are four answers for you. They Ooh. are... Terry Wogan, Benny Hill, John McEnroe, and Saddam Hussein. I wonder, please tell me, which one of those people is no longer on display in Madame Tussauds? Please vote. You've all voted, and the answer is... John McEnroe. Have a look at these four. The Black Sea, the Red Sea, the Yellow Sea, and Chelsea. Obviously not football fans. Um, <laughs> which one of those is the furthest south? Please vote. I can tell you the answer to that one is the Yellow Sea. Well, at the moment in the lead, Alison and Lynn, they both have 60. And we have a tie at 30 points with Jed, David and Richard. <laughs> you still have everything to play for. Have a look at these four. I <gasps> offer you. Mulligatawny, Clam Chowder, Mock Turtle, and Brown Windsor. But which one of those did Alice meet in Wonderland? Please vote. You've all voted, and the answer is... Mock Turtle. And here are your final four. Badger, Gorilla, Mole, and Chimpanzee. One of those is purely vegetarian. Which one is it? Please vote. OK, and the answer is... Gorilla! So, let's have a look at those scores and find out who's going to go for the head-to-head. -head. Well, as I see, the clear winner is Lynn. Well done. And... Jed. A mere 10 points, I'm afraid. However, we have Alison, we have David, and we have Richard on 70 points. And the quickest one was... David! <laughs> David and Lynn are just one round away from a place in the grand final and the chance to win a thousand prizes. 
have you ever thought where you could actually put 1,000 prizes? Because I tell you, I've had a nightmare carrying them around with me. Trying to park a Pantechnic around here is no joke. <laughs> so, I prevailed on a very good friend of mine to keep an eye on them for me. Have a look at this. Hello, everybody. Hello, Dale. This week, I have been given responsibility for overseeing this spectacular array of prizes. 1,000 of them, all ready and waiting for the eventual winner of 1,000 to 1. All these prizes have been donated to Comic Relief by generous companies and other organizations. But I know what you're saying. I know what you're wondering. How do we know there are 1,000 prizes here? Well, there's only one way to prove it, I suppose. <laughs> As I have 23 seconds left, can I do it? Rapid speech, here goes. Five vacuum cleaners, treadmill, rowing machine, printer, computer, 350 pairs of pants, uh, golf clubs, bag, bag lawn market, sports games, bench, camera, washing machine, machine, 100 CDs, time. DVDs, videos and CD-ROMs. <sighs> what a relief. But it's all for comic relief. 1,000 prizes, up for grabs on 1,000 to 1. And back to you, Dale, before they ask me to do all that again while I drink a glass of water. <laughs> Thank you, Nicholas. Oh, and let's not forget to say a big, big thank you to the very generous people who donated those prizes to Comic Relief. Oh, and not to mention all the other goodies we've got lined up, the Comic Relief projects in the winner's home area. Well, I wish you both lots of luck. It's time to the head-to-head. -head. I'm going to ask you a series of questions against the clock. Now, each question will have two options. All you have to do is vote for the one that you think is right. In the event of a dead heat, I shall ask a tiebreaker question, and then we will have a winner. So, are you ready? Your time starts now. The Big Sleep and The Big Chill. But which of those films starred Humphrey Bogart? Please vote. Both voted. The answer there was The Big Sleep. Sabina or Serena? Which one is the national airline of Belgium? Please vote. You both voted correctly. It is Sabina. The Mendips or the Cheviots? Name the hills that border England and Scotland. Please vote. Which one is it? You both agree on the Mendips. You're both wrong. It's the Cheviots. Baseball or basketball? Which one of those sports is played by the Boston Red Sox? Please vote. You've both gone for baseball. You're both right. Dempsey and Makepeace. One of them is the middle name of novelist William Thackeray. Please vote. Which one is it? You've both gone for Makepeace. You're both absolutely right. Prestel or Pretzel? Which one is the information system first launched in 1968? You've both gone for Prestel. You're both right. Neck and neck. Urban and rural. Which one is the Christian name shared by eight popes? Please vote. Oh, it was neck and neck until then. Time is up. David's gone for urban and Lynn's gone for rural. The answer I was looking for was urban. David, congratulations, you're going through. <laughs> You have been wonderful. You have been absolutely gorgeous. I'm sorry, but you did so well. I'm so sorry I took the mickey out of you after a whole show. I'll let you off. And you have been wonderful. <laughs> My best regards to your deaf collie. <laughs> well, and next time you meet, I'll be up to speed myself. Right. All right, darling. <laughs> yeah. Give her a cheer. That's lovely, Lynn. And good luck with um, all your red nose projects. Okay. David. Congratulations, Thank you. well done. That urban rural question. Mm. Did you really know that was a guess? I did I did know that, yes. Yes. Uh, called Catholic boy. No, well, well done. I know, I know my popes. You do. Yeah, you do yeah. that. You do. Well, you've done very well. Thank well, you. I have two envelopes here. One of them is for you, one of them is for a comic relief project in your area. Nice. This one's for you. It's a lovely prize too. It's a weekend for two in Dublin, including tickets to see Westlife in concert. Well done, congratulations. Thank you very much. And um, and this this is a state-of-the-art PC complete with monitor, mouse, keyboard and a selection of software packages all to go to a comic relief project. So that's for you too. Well done, David. Thank you very much. Thank and, you. Um, Thank you. That's all from us here on 1001 for this week. But in the meantime, don't forget why we're here. You can join us and say pants to poverty here in the UK and Africa by phoning for a comic relief fundraising pack. And the number will be coming up at the end of the show. And remember... This Red Nose Day, whatever you do, do something. I will be back in a couple of minutes with a variety of club awards, all suited and booted in something quite different. But I'll also be back here next Wednesday to play 1000 to 1. See you then. Have a good night. <laughs>
Please don't forget why we did this tonight. The money you raise for comic relief does change the lives of poor and vulnerable people here in the UK and Africa. Call now for a fundraising pack on 09068 20 2001. And remember, whatever you do, do something.